the Tiananmen Square protests of 1989, commonly known as the June 4 Incident or 89 Democracy Movement in Chinese, were student-led popular demonstrations in Beijing which took place in the spring of 1989 and received broad support from city residents. Exposing deep splits within China's political leadership, the protests were forcibly suppressed by hardline leaders who ordered the military to enforce martial law in the country's capital. The crackdown that initiated on June 3-4 became known as the Tiananmen Square Massacre or the June 4 Massacre as troops with assault, rifles and tanks inflicted casualties on unarmed civilians trying to block the military's advance towards Tiananmen Square in the heart of Beijing, which students and other demonstrators had occupied for seven weeks. The number of civilian deaths has been estimated at anywhere between hundreds and thousands. The Chinese government condemned the protests as a counter-revolutionary riot, and has largely prohibited discussion and remembrance of the events. The protests were triggered in April 1989 by the death of former Communist Party General Secretary Hu Yeobang, a liberal reformer who was deposed after losing a power struggle with hardliners over the direction of political and economic reforms. University students marched and gathered in Tiananmen Square to mourn who had also voiced grievances against inflation, limited career prospects, and corruption of the party elite. The protesters called for government accountability, freedom of the press, freedom of speech, and the restoration of workers' control over industry. At the height of the protests, about a million people assembled in the square. Most of them were university students in Beijing. The government initially took a conciliatory stance toward the protesters. The student-led hunger strike galvanized support for the demonstrators around the country and the protests spread to 400 cities by mid-May. Ultimately, China's paramount leader Deng Xiaoping and other party elders resolved to use force. Party authorities declared martial law on May 20 and mobilized as many as 300,000 troops to Beijing. In the aftermath of the crackdown, the government conducted widespread arrests of protesters and their supporters, cracked down on other protests around China, expelled foreign journalists and strictly controlled coverage of the events in the domestic press. The police and internal security forces were strengthened. Officials deemed sympathetic to the protests were demoted or purged. Zhao Ziyang was ousted in a party leadership reshuffle and replaced with Jiang Zemin. Political reforms were largely halted and economic reforms did not resume until Deng Xiaoping's 1992 Southern Tour. The Chinese government was widely condemned internationally for the use of force against the protesters. Western governments imposed economic sanctions and arms embargoes. Name. In the Chinese language, the incident is most commonly known as the June 4 Incident, or colloquially as June 4. The nomenclature of the former is consistent with the customary names of the other two great protests that occurred in Tiananmen Square, the May 4 Movement of 1919, and the April 5 Movement of 1976. June 4 refers to the day on which the People's Liberation Army cleared Tiananmen Square of protesters, although actual operations began on the evening of June 3. Some use the June 4 designation solely to refer to the killings carried out by the army, while others use it to refer to the entire movement. Names such as June 4 Movement and 89 Democracy Movement are used to describe the event in its entirety. Outside mainland China, and among circles critical of the crackdown within mainland China, it is commonly referred to in Chinese as June 4 Massacre and June 4 Crackdown. To bypass internet censorship in China, which uniformly considers all the above-mentioned names too sensitive for search engines and public forums, alternative names have sprung up to describe the events on the internet, such as May 35th VIIV and 8 Squared. The government of the People's Republic of China have used numerous names for the events since 1989 gradually reducing the intensity of terminology applied.
As the events were unfolding, it was labeled a counter-revolutionary riot, which was later changed to simply riot, followed by political storm. And finally the leadership settled on the more neutralized phrase, political turmoil between the spring and summer of 1989 which it uses to this day. In English, the terms Tiananmen Square Massacre, Tiananmen Square Protests or Tiananmen Square Crackdown are often used to describe the series of events. However, much of the violence did not actually happen in Tiananmen, but outside the square in the city of Beijing near the Muidi area. Background the Cultural Revolution ended with Chairman Mao Zedong's death in 1976. The movement, spearheaded by Mao, caused severe damage to the country's economic and social fabric. The country was mired in poverty as economic production slowed or stopped. Political ideology was paramount in the lives of ordinary people as well as the inner workings of the Communist Party itself. At the third plenum of the 11th Central Committee in December 1978, Deng Xiaoping emerged as China's leader. Deng launched a comprehensive program to reform the Chinese economy. Within the span of several years, the direction of the country had shifted in its entirety. The focus on ideological purity was gone, replaced by a full-on drive to achieve material prosperity. To run his reform agenda, Deng promoted his allies to top government and party posts. Hu Yeo Bang was appointed the General Secretary of the CPC in February 1980, and Zhao Ziyang was named as Premier in September. Challenges with reform The reforms aimed to decrease the role of the state in the economy and gradually introduced private forms of production in agriculture and industry. By 1981, 73% of rural farms had decollectivized and 80% of state-owned enterprises were permitted to retain profits. Within a few years, production increased by leaps and bounds, and poverty was reduced dramatically. While the reforms were generally well received by the public, concerns grew over a series of social problems that the changes brought about, including corruption and nepotism by elite party bureaucrats. The state-mandated pricing system, in place since the 1950s, had long kept prices stable at low levels that reduced incentives to increase production. The initial reforms created a two-tier system where some prices were fixed while others were allowed to fluctuate. In a market with chronic shortages, this allowed people with powerful connections to buy goods at low prices and sell at market prices. In addition, the money supply had expanded too fast. At least a third of factories were unprofitable. The government tightened the money supply in 1988, leaving much of the economy without loans. Following the 1988 Beidaiha meeting, the party leadership under Deng agreed to a transition to a market-based pricing system. News of the relaxation of price controls triggered waves of cash withdrawals, buying and hoarding all over China. The government panicked and rescinded the price reforms in less than two weeks, but its impact was pronounced for a much longer period of time. Inflation soared. Official indices report a consumer price index increase of 30% in Beijing between 1987-88 leading to panic among salaried workers that they could no longer afford staple goods. Moreover, in the new market economy, unprofitable state-owned enterprises were pressured to cut costs. The iron rice bowl, i.e. job security and a host of social benefits that come with it, ranging from medical care to subsidized housing, were at risk for a vast segment of the population. Social disenfranchisement and legitimacy crisis reformist leaders envisioned in 1978 that intellectuals would play a leading role in guiding the country through reforms. But this did not happen as planned. Despite the opening of new universities and increased enrollment, the state-directed education system did not produce enough graduates to meet increased market demand in the areas of agriculture, light industry, services, and foreign investment. The job market was especially limited for students specializing in social sciences and the humanities. 
Moreover, private companies no longer needed to accept students assigned to them by the state, and many high-paying jobs were offered on the basis of nepotism and favoritism. Gaining a good state-assigned placement meant navigating a highly inefficient bureaucracy that gave power to officials who had little expertise in their area of jurisdiction. Facing a dismal job market and limited chances of going abroad, intellectuals and students had a greater vested interest in political issues. Small study groups, such as the Democracy Salon and the Lawn Salon, began appearing on Beijing university campuses. These organizations motivated the students to get involved politically. At the same time, the party's nominally socialist ideology faced a legitimacy crisis as it gradually adopted capitalist practices. Private enterprise gave rise to profiteers who took advantage of LAX regulations, and who often flaunted their wealth in front of the have-nots of society. Popular discontent was brewing over unfair wealth distribution. Greed, not skill, appeared to be the most crucial factor of success. There was widespread public disillusionment over the country's future. People wanted change, yet the power to define the correct path continued to rest solely in the hands of the unelected government. The comprehensive and wide-ranging reforms created political differences over the pace of marketization and the control over the ideology that came with it. Opening a deep chasm within the central leadership, the reformers favored political liberalization and a plurality of ideas as a channel to voice popular discontent and pressed for further reforms. The conservatives said that the reforms had gone too far, and advocated for a return to greater state control to ensure social stability and to better align with the party's socialist ideology. Both sides needed the backing of paramount leader Deng Xiaoping to carry out important policy decisions. 1986 Student demonstrations In the summer of 1986, astrophysics professor Fang Liji, who had returned from a tenure at Princeton University, began a personal tour around universities in China, speaking about liberty, human rights, and separation of powers. Fang was a part of a wider undercurrent within the elite intellectual community that China's poverty and underdevelopment as well as the disaster of the Cultural Revolution was the direct result of an authoritarian political system and the rigid planned economy that came with it. The view that political reform was the only answer to China's ongoing problems gained widespread appeal amongst students. As Fang's recorded speeches became widely circulated all over the country, in response, Deng Xiaoping warned that Fang was blindly worshipping Western lifestyles, capitalism, and multi-party systems, while undermining China's socialist ideology, traditional values, and the party's leadership. Inspired by Fang and other people power movements around the world, in December 1986, Student demonstrators staged protests against the slow pace of reform. The issues were wide-ranging, and included demands for economic liberalization, democracy, and rule of law. While the protests were initially contained in Hefei, where Fang lived, it quickly spread to Shanghai, Beijing and other major cities. The central leadership was alarmed by the protests and accused the students of fermenting cultural revolution-style turmoil. General Secretary Hu Yeo Bang was blamed for taking a soft attitude and mishandling the protests, thus undermining social stability. He was denounced thoroughly by conservatives, who was forced to resign as General Secretary on January 16, 1987. Following his resignation, the party began their anti-bourgeois liberalization campaign, taking aim at who? Political liberalization and Western-inspired ideas in general. The campaign put a stop to student protests and tightened the political environment, but who remained popular with progressives within the party, intellectuals, and students.